Are we going live? Are we live? It looks like we're live! Hurrah! Hurrah, hurrah! Now I just have to find the video on my phone and we'll be there! Good grief! There we are! Can I hear me? Are we live? It looks I like I can! We're live. Excellent. Right, turn that off. So, hello. Sorry, I'm really prompt today. Um, my husband decided that two seconds before I was due to go live was a great time to ask me if... Oh, I'm getting subtitles. To ask me if I can give him a power cable for a mobile phone. Um, I need to find out how to get rid of... Um, how to get rid of... I've got subtitles. I don't want subtitles. Bear with me while I get rid of that and start again. Um, and I need to see the comments on my laptop. Wendy is here and Rachel is here. So do let me know... Um, what you're eating on the 25th of December. And I've specifically said the 25th of September and not called it any other day because I know that not everyone who joins me um, celebrates Christmas. So I thought I would ask um, about the 25th And find the video on my phone again. So Nora is here. There I am. Am I without subtitles this time? Yes. No. What? I don't want live captions. Does anyone know how I get rid of live captions? Ah, I just drag them to the bottom. Excellent. Hurrah. Because I could really do without live captions this morning. So we've got uh, Wendy here. We've got Rachel here. We've got Candy. We've got Claire. Claire, I owe you an apology. I haven't sent your uh, prize out yet. Uh, it will be in the post. I'm going to kind of wait until after the Christmas rush because I think things are going to get lost in the post. I don't know why. That's just what I think. Um, and I need a bit of coffee. So, yes, I just rang over to my, speak to my husband about five minutes ago because uh, he's going to get back. And suddenly it was, have you got a power cable that I can plug into a, a cigarette lighter in the car that powers the phone that I my old phone no ah well I'm going to need more power okay so I've given him an external battery mm. but he's over in the house um, and I thought by some miracle he might come and meet me halfway <laughs> no no why would I think that? So yes, so what's everyone going to eat on the 25th of December for their main meal? I'm going to put some hand cream on because my hands are incredibly dry. And then we will start some chat. You're all being very quiet today. Husbands, absolutely, Rachel. I love him to bits, but good grief. Morning, B. Ooh, rhubarb and rose. Yes, rhubarb and rose. Love it. I'm a real rose fragrance fan. So, yes. Uh, it may be here for your birthday. It may well be. If I knew when your birthday was, Claire, I would. Yes. Uh, B's having, uh, sorry, Baz is having roast beef and also doing a turkey breast. Green chilli, ginger and garlic. Ooh, that sounds yummy. Yum, yum. Yum. My father is coming up. He's actually in London, uh, on the outskirts of London. So he is in tier four. But because he's in our support bubble, he is allowed to come up and stay with us. So he's coming. My hair. Uh, so, yes, he's coming up later today. Uh, Candy is having smoked turkey. Yummy, yum, yum. Uh, Lorraine Douglas is here and they're having good grief. Lots of roast meat in the Douglas household. We're having turkey. 
uh, we're having turkey. We were actually at the supermarket this morning. So for those of you who are not in the UK, um, you may have heard that we've got a new variant. Um, that's actually not only in the UK, it's also on mainland Europe, but hey, um, we currently have got the ports in France closed for traffic going to the, coming to the UK, which is mighty inconvenient. Um, oh, I've got a sniffle. Hang on. I need a tissue. I have a little sniffle. Cold. As in, it is cold, not I have a cold. Um, so, yes, so there's... there's we went into our local supermarket this morning we had to queue because we forgot it opened at seven so as we had arranged to pick up our turkey at eight we got there just before eight to find the queues literally around the car park um and morning jane and um yeah it was all very calm actually because we're not allowed too many people in the supermarkets at any one time for a pre-christmas shop it was actually really nice because we weren't having to elbow people and there was plenty of everything. So, and by the time we got in, it was probably half past eight, quarter to nine. So the shop had been open for nearly two hours and there was plenty of everything. So don't panic anyone. Um, the things that they say we're going to be short of are things like lettuce, which doesn't keep anyway. So don't bother over, uh, over buying. Um, so, uh, more lots of roast meats. Wendy says don't get her started on the French. Uh, yeah, I think I think actually it was a bit of a deliberate ploy just to remind us that Brexit's going to be interesting. Um, so I'm going to do some housekeeping, then we're going to start. So if you can see a red button above on the right hand side, or it may be grey, um, then you are live with me on Facebook. If it isn't, if there isn't a live there, then you're watching the replay. And if you're on YouTube, you are watching the replay. And as I say, every time, I still get people who are watching the replay, especially on YouTube, who think it's live. So Rachel's wondering if her Wi-Fi and the video is pausing for anyone else. I, Claire's is keep, keep. Um, it's coming through without any problem on my phone and my phone is not plugged into anything. Neither is my laptop. Um, so I'm getting the video on my phone through the Wi-Fi. So I don't know. I'm going to keep going after the fun we had yet last week. I'm just going to keep going um, anyway. So, yes, it this is a live. It's recorded or it's live on Tuesday, the 22nd of December. If you share the video and put the word shared, ideally as a single comment um, in the comments, either on Facebook or on YouTube, then you will be entered into a prize draw that I will draw in two weeks time. Um, sorry, I was just reading Baz's, um, Baz's comment. Um, Time and I'll let you know what the prize is later on. Uh, for those of you who are in the UK, yes, UPS is struggling to get orders across to us at the moment. Um, there, we've been advised by uh, stamping up that it's because of the COVID that UPS have decided that because of the COVID problem, uh, they're not delivering. If you look at the UPS website, it's very clear that the reason they're not delivering is because they can't get out of France to the UK, which I think is probably nearer the case. Um, so the news that I've most recently heard, which is about an hour old, um, is that they are working on how this is going to happen safely. Um, and it's either going to be in place uh, tomorrow or Thursday. So it'll be there. May, it may be a bit delayed, but the it looks like the ports in France are going to open um, tomorrow or Thursday. So I'm being fairly chilled by it because frankly, there's nothing else to be uh, because nobody can do anything about it. So let's just chill and things will get to us. It just might take a little longer to get orders through, but hey. Mm. 
So, one of my orders shipped last night, so it's currently left Frankfurt. So its next stop should be the UK. So clearly they're shipping to somewhere. No social distancing in Essex. Marvellous. And that's in one of the red areas. OK. Um, right. So uh, quick things to talk about. Uh, remember, if you don't already know that Whisper White is being retired because the manufacturer has gone out of business and it's going to be replaced with Basic White. They are trying to get Basic White into the warehouse as quickly as they can. Um, so fingers crossed that that will be with us soon. Um, and I agree, Wendy, the lorry drivers must be having a hell of a time. What's what's actually quite interesting, I watched the Downing Street report yesterday, and I don't want to get off on co to subjects of COVID and Brexit and things, but I watched the, watched the Downing Street report yesterday, and um, because we've got plans in place to deal with a no-deal Brexit, if you can deal with a no-deal Brexit, uh, they're actually using those for the current problem with the French ports. Um, so actually, it's showing that they are prepared or we are prepared for Brexit to a degree. So lots of people joining, which is wonderful. Now, um, I have my Christmas jumper on, by the way. Can you see? I've got my Christmas jumper. One of my Christmas jumpers. I have about 12. Uh, so I ha am about to post. No, let's go back one. Um, if there are any customers on here... Um, hopefully you will have either just got or will be getting your mini and celebration catalogues any day now if you haven't already got them. Nora, I know yours goes halfway around the world and back again before it gets to you. Um, but hopefully you have got them or you will be getting them very soon. Hi, Sylvia. Just spotted that Sylvia's there. The trouble is I haven't got my glasses on again, so I can't really see what's going on without squinting. Um, so in that there is a flyer about product shares. I'll show you this in a minute, but this is um, this is a quarter share, 108 sheets of paper, just saying. Um, so I will quickly go through the product shares uh, when we flip down. Um, come January, there are going to be some changes, mostly because of celebration vis-a-vis -vis classes and events, which is also in the flyer on the flyer that I've sent out. Um, so, as we all know, it goes live on the 5th of January. Um, so that's exciting to look forward to. So in January, in no particular order, it's date order, uh, 3rd of January is the deadline for uh, ordering product shares. Um, I'm happy to sell product shares to anyone, but if you've already got a demonstrator, please ask them if they do them first. And if you are a demonstrator yourself, please ask your upline first um, but if otherwise I'm very happy to do shares um, or at 3 p.m. on the 6th of January these are all UK times I will be doing a live celebration kickoff event which will be on Facebook uh, with lots of samples using celebration products I love that I've put this I haven't made the samples yet um, and there will be a shopping special so watch out for that 10th of January will be the deadline for my birthday class which I will be sending details of that out very soon. You received your card yesterday, Wendy. Oh, OK, well, that's useful to know, actually, because the cards were sent on the same day as the... No, they were sent the day or two days before the catalogues went out. So catalogues may still be in the post. Anyway, so yes, there'll be... There's, I'm doing a birthday class, which I will start advertising very soon. Um, that will be for January, for the big class in January. Then I'm introducing a new event for this year, which is what I'm calling a mini class, um, which will be less expensive. It'll have less product in, it will have fewer projects. Um, and the first one, which is deadline is the 24th of January. I may have to bring that further forward, depending on what happens with um, delivery times. Uh, but that will be Valentine's slash Friendship. Um, in the UK, those of you in the US probably don't understand the fact that in the UK, we don't do a huge amount of Valentine's. The new mini catalogue has about four pages of Valentine's products. Generally in the UK, we send one Valentine's to our loved one. 
We don't do it to friends. Um, so the mini class will be Valentine slash friendship. Um, so it's as non-specific as I can get it while still having it as a Valentine's class. Um, then I will also, certainly during celebration, uh, I'm adding some extra live classes or events. Um, so there'll be the usual Facebook Live on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock, which is this event. It will be shorter, uh, but it will happen. And then every Thursday at 3 p.m. on YouTube, assuming I can get it to work out, and every Saturday at 10 a.m. also on YouTube. So that is all that's coming up. Um, Bee's also received her card, so that's good. Things are getting through. They are possibly taking a little while. Um, I know I posted the cards certainly either a day or two days before I posted the catalogues because the catalogues hadn't all arrived. Um, always a plan. Right, okay, so let's get started. I'm going to flip you down. I've got my sticky, not so sticky piece of washi tape. I have forgotten anything. Famous last words. Oh, this is where I'm going to have to not unscrew you. That makes more sense to me than it will to you. Right. Now, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, replay and all those good things, remember, I cannot zoom in. <laughs> Is that all I'm doing, Candy? Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Um, right, so let me just show you what a quarter share of all the papers looks like. Now, the Dandy Garden is one each of each of the 12 pieces of paper. Um, and then everything else is a double, apart from the specialty paper. Can't remember what it's called yet. Um, but this is for each of the three colours, which are... Blushing Bride, Rococo Rose and Sahara Sand. Uh, and they're all in different coloured foils. It's stunning. Just saying, absolutely stunning. Um, so this is a quarter share cut at six by six. Um, that is the only size I will be doing the quarter shares at. I know you're getting two of some of each of the papers if you if you get this. Um, but they will be cut at quarters because then I can just do one cut, two cuts and it's done. Um, and I don't really have to worry about um, sorting them out. And sorting them out takes an enormous amount of time. Uh, half share will be the same, but will be six by 12. Um, so those will be six by 12, apart from obviously the six by six, which can only ever be six by six, but you'll get two of each of those. And then there's also all the ribbons. And again, I'm doing quarter shares of each. Postage is free. Um, so I'm doing it without postage. So whatever you order is free, uh, only for the UK because it's only the UK that I do. Um, and obviously I will try and get these out as early as I can, depending on what shipping is like. So that's that. Um, so yes, let's get started. What is slightly frightening is I've actually prepared. Isn't that just weird? Uh, we are using, it's new but not brand new, so I'm using the quite curvy stamp set and matching dies. No, that's not the matching, the matching dies are in there. Uh, I'm using the ornate layers dies for one thing, um, so we'll come back to that. So these are aforementioned dies. I've had already done some of the die cutting, um, so yay. Yay me. Now I just need to just find, I've got <laughs> somewhere I've got my sketches and it would be really helpful if I had brought those up first. Um, bear with me one moment, Caller. There we go. Yes, that looks more, that looks like my sketches. I've, I've prepped everything. I just haven't got the sketches in front of me. Right, so we're going to start with what I think is probably the easiest, maybe. Um, let me get the right one out. No, it's not that one. It's not that one. Oh, it's that one. In that case, it's this one. So I am pairing 
with Magenta Madness. Um, I have already die cut some bits, but not everything. So let me show you what I have die cut. I'm going to need those as well. I'm going to need to put the heater on too. Um, I turned it off, but I thought I was having a bit of a, a middle-aged moment, but um, I'm now freezing cold. I've turned the heating off in my studio because I'm not spending a huge amount of time in it. <laughs> I like the curvy as well, so I'm glad you're awake early this week. Thank you, Candy. Right, so let's get rid of those for the moment. So I have die cut these little green bits from um, one of the dies in the die bundle. So it's this one here. These are in Granny Apple Green and I will be doing some colouring in Granny Apple Green. This is from the Ornate Layers dies. Um, you don't have to use the die. You could just use the... Um, you could just use the uh, a rectangle of card, but I've used the dies. I love these dies, although the one I've chosen is the least frilly. Um, I didn't want too many frills. So, right, okay. So I have already die cut. These are just scraps. I've got a liner for the inside. Um, don't need that piece. So this is, was a quarter sheet of Whisper White um, and I just die cut with the dotty die because there are th three what I would call border dies, uh, two of them cut so the dots and this sort of fleur-de-lis type die both cut as well and this one just punches bits out um, as far as a border is concerned. So this is the dot one um, and I actually don't need that piece. I will use that for scrap. So this is simply going to go down here, but we're going to do some stamping on it. Uh, then we're going to build some layers up. So I'm going to pop this. This is a liner for the inside because writing on magenta madness, not the easiest thing in the world. So we do need that. We do need that. We don't need those bits for the moment. So I am going to grab my leafy border, so this long border, and I also want the stamp, the sentiment, made with love just for you. So I'll pop that to one side for the moment, grab a nice long block, so this is my eye block which I think is probably the only block that's going to work. And I'm going to be coming kind of there-ish. Uh, I'll probably go off. So I will bring in a scrap of paper, which has so far only got the sentiment that I was trying out for my husband for his Christmas card, hence to a wonderful husband. Right, so memento. we're using blends so memento you can use any of the classic inks as well just do not use um, stays on because stays on and blends is not a great mix just saying so there we go that's that I will be using that again later uh, I'm also going to I'm going to grab the longer strip for my sentiment, which I'm going to put on a D block. Well, apparently a dirty D block. And then I'm going to stamp all of the birds because we're going to need one of each of the birds for each of the cards. So we might as well stamp them all at once. So this, I'm going to... There's always one side that I think is slightly smoother than the others. I'll see you on the replay then, Rachel. Sorry, it's pausing. I've not, as I say, I'm not having a problem on my phone, but. And my 
repeater is working, so I don't know. Right, so let me grab my dirty side of my scrub. This was new not that long ago. And I wash it. Just saying. Right, okay, so I'm also going to stamp my birds and then we're going to bring out the little baby toy. Because I need to do some die cutting. So I'm going to use my baby. So we want all of the birds, which again, I'm just going to plonk onto one block. Hopefully I can get them all to fit onto that piece of paper. So I say I'm going to put them all on one block. Oh, trouble with um, photopolymer is they do stick to everything. Excellent. So on the basis that Rachel has had problems with the video, is everyone else still okay? Not there's a huge amount I can do about it if you're not, but it would be good to know if there's anybody there. Anybody there watching anybody here? So if you can let me know, that would be wonderful. Ideally with a comment. Right, so I don't need those anymore, so let's pop them away. It's always quite alar disarming, not alarming. You're okay now, Claire, good. Um, it's a little disarming that there is a delay no problems with Lorna, good. Candy, yours has got better. But yes, because there's a delay, now sometimes the delay can be almost a minute. Hello, Heather. So, right, I'm going to die cut these first so that if I make a boo-boo of die cutting, um, I can not waste time colouring them. So I don't need that anymore or certainly for the moment I don't need that for the moment mini baby baby my baby I love this thing so I've got my cutting plate one sorry my base plate my cutting plate my top cutting plate my piece of paper, my die, which I want, I want to die cut towards this end because the other end is going to get covered up. Let me just check, yep. So pop the top plate on, hold it in place and wind. That's where we meet the die because I'm square on to the die. Going over the die is a little bit e interesting. Hi, Nora. She went, she came back a few pauses. <laughs> so other Wendy has bought a new baby and it's on its way. B has no problems, okay. So there we are, so there's our die cut sentiment. So that's good, don't need that piece anymore and I can put my die back into the Ornate Layers box. Now there was a call last evening with um, for the Stamping Up Leaders group um, and there was a lady on who was helping with, some people have had a few challenges with the new die cutter. Um, and I thought it would be worth just talking that through a little. So some people have said that they're finding it really difficult to get the thing through the doofa. Um, be 
because it is so small, I mean, you'll have noticed that these have got beveled ed edges. Because it's so small, it can feel a bit like you're trying to drive a car over a sleeping policeman if you don't help it. And to help it, you can either slightly offset one of your plates. Uh, you definitely don't want to have your die here if you're feeding it in that way, because then you've got card, your die and all your plates, and that's going to be tricky. So the best thing is to slightly offset um, something whenever you're die cutting, um, just as a tip. Now, I find that every time I run it through, the cutting plate, the base, the bottom cutting plate gets a little bowed. So I'm actually flipping my plate every time so it doesn't get too bowed in one direction. Um, I need my dies. Put them away. So I need all of my little birdies. Oh, and the other thing she said is because we're crafters, let's admit something here. We're crafters. There are these lovely rubber um, feet on the base, which helps it not move about. If you're finding it skidding, um, have a look because you may find that you've got just dust, um, embossing powder, glitter, all sorts of things can stick to those. So um, do check if you're finding that your machine is moving about a bit. Um, do check that you haven't covered the base, the feet in glitter or just general dirt. Oops, don't want to put that through again. So our little birdies, I'm going to grab some washi tape because I think it may be good to pop these down. So I have to get the right one on the right one. I think that's that one. Looks like it. So I think three small dies and expecting it to not jump about is asking a little much. So I'm going to accept that they're going to move and do something about it. Of course, the dies themselves have picked up the glue from the base. But hey, there we go. Dimensional backings. Absolutely. I mean, let's face it, they get everywhere. Um, I know I've said this before, but our bedroom is about as far from my craft studio as you can get. Um, and I have to walk outside to get there because my craft studio is not in the house. It's away from the house. Um, so, yes, I still end up with dimensional backings in the bedroom. In fact, even in the bathroom en suite, which is further still because you have to walk through the bedroom to get to the bathroom. Uh, so, yes, happy days. As they say, that's moved already. So let's pick that up and pop it down where it needs to be. This is the fiddly bit, of course. This is the boring fiddly bit, but there were limits to what I wanted to prep so that it didn't just look like a kit I was putting together. So base plate, cutting plate, top plate with a slide. So this should go through without any problem. I'm only moving it because otherwise I will hit my lamp. And I do tend to hold it down when I first start. And then once it's kind of caught, just wind it through. Um, and I can feel the moment I go over the dies, it's just so much easier. For the moment, that's all I need that for. I don't think I need it for anything else, actually. So let's peel those off. Pop those away, or at least in the case where they're supposed to go. And then we can colour those. Pop these away. And one of the things I have found, now that I've got my mini, is that I am using dies more. Is there any news about the magnetic plates? Nope. Nope. Glitter too, absolutely. Do you have a glittery cat? <laughs> Yes, well, I ended up with a glittery house um, because I did my, finally got around to doing the um, the wreath for the front of the house. Um, and it's got ribbon on it. Oh, this is Seaside Spray. 
Um, so the ribbon has got glitter and I hadn't realized it was going to fall off because it was in a roll. Um, and it's everywhere in the kitchen. Um, yes, hubby was not impressed. So all I'm doing is very basic colouring. These are tiny, so there's no point in getting too carried away with them. So I'm going to put dark seaside spray on their backs and light seaside spray on their fronts. Um, as I say, nothing complicated. And one will go on each of the cards. Now I ought to just give a shout out to... Um, now, who was it? Uh, I want to say... Bear with me one moment. Blue Rose Designs, who is, I think, in Australia. Um, who was the inspiration behind these cards today. I always like to give credit where credit is due. So that's that. Then this card is going to have more colouring than anything because, or any of the others because it's also got the, um, the vine. The others are less colouring and more construction. So, let's say really easy colouring. Nothing complicated, just two shades of seaside spray. So if I bring it up, you should just about be able to see that we've got a slightly darker back than front. So I'm going to have, let's see, which one do I want for which? I'll have that one for this card and pop these two to one side for the moment. I want that one on that card. Let's pop that in there and that one on that one. So there we are. Right. OK, so let's bring back in our die cut piece that I've now lost. Ooh, up. It's because I've covered it up. Right, so this piece. So for this, I'm just going to use um, garden green and I'm not colouring all of them. So I'm not doing the large leaves. I'm just doing the small leaves. That's the plan anyway. I may change my mind, but you never know. So I'm going to lay down light first um, and then I will add some dark. But I don't want the green to overwhelm the card because the card is mostly magenta madness. So literally just colouring in with the light blend. Uh, that's a leaf, I think. And I think that's a leaf. It's always a little difficult when things go off the page. So that's the light. I might add a little bit more, but we will see. So just adding a little bit of dark, just for some shading, just so that it's not just a flat color. Obviously, if there's somewhere where I think there's going to be a shadow, I'm going to put more dark there. Um, but for the ones that aren't in shade, it's just a bit. Yeah, I think I'll add a bit more. It's always one of those things you just don't know until you try it. I'm going to have to turn that heater off again. So I'll add a bit more splatted around. But I don't want, as I say, I don't want all of them to be green because I think it will just be too overpowering with the magenta madness. So let's see, we'll do that one. And that. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. I might actually just put in the vine as well. Just so there's a bit more. Um, just so there's a bit more colour. So the problem with using my phone for these things is it every now and again goes, really, you want me to be on still? I don't. I'm going to go to sleep. 
but I do find it's a good way so I can I can do the sketch and then just photograph it and it's just there in front of me and I don't have to worry about a scrappy looking sketch being flung around my desk right so that's that and then just blend that in a bit and we are good to go and we can build our card up Right, so that's that. Okay. So, Magenta Madness card base. So this is just half a sheet, cut long and thin and scored in the middle. Uh, I'm not going to use dimensions for this, I mean, on the live, because they will be on my website tomorrow. Um, you tried something new with your blends on Christmas cards this year. Ooh, that sounds intriguing, Candy. So this is then going to go on here and then we're going to build stuff up. So I'm going to start with some seal. And I still do use the fuse flick a little. It's not as violent as the original fuse flick, uh, but I do find that it's quite an easy way of breaking the the tape. Balsa wood tags or wood slices? Oh yes, it would feather on the wood. That's a shame. So I'm only turning this over because I'm going to find it easier to push against this side. That's just me, really. Now you may find, actually on this one it's alright, uh, but you may find that you can never cut a quarter of a sheet completely accurately, or rarely will you. So you may need to just trim. So line up with the top and then trim the bottom just with some snips. And I would do that from the inside. So put the snips against the edge. So the next thing that's going to kind of be laid down is that. And I am going to just trim that off. So I'll show you how to trim in a moment. Um, and this I'm going to have a dimensional there. And then I'm going to build up here. So I need my little birdie. Little birdie. And my bits of greenery, which I will probably end up doing some surgery on. These are going to go kind of underneath as well as on top. Um, so I need some liquid adhesive. In fact, what I might do, bear with me, is pop down a dimensional there and then I'm going to be building everything from this side so if I put adhesive here um, and let's see I want it about there and some more just there I can always add in some more with glue drop glue, glue dots um, but it just means I've got something to support what I'm doing. So obviously the best thing is to try and get this straight. So I'm just going to line my card up with the grid paper and then eyeball across. And that looks reasonably straight to me. So that's just got that little bit of lift. So this, oh, and I've come slightly off the end there where I put the glue, but I have a glue remover that I have saved from times gone by, so that's easy. You can just use um, your finger, will get it off, but I do find a, a glue eraser is a really quick way of doing that. So if you need to trim to the edge of a card, I would always do it from the back and then just line up um, your snip so that you've got this, this edge against the edge of your card and then just snip and you get a nice straight cut like that. And then these I can just tuck in underneath because I haven't got adhesive down in this bottom area here or too much. Ooh. Removing your dimensional backing is a great way of making sure that your things stick down. Just saying. 
Right, so I'm going to have this reasonably long, I think, but I'm going to trim off, trim off the very end. And then I don't want them flat is the only thing. So I'm going to pop a tiny bit of glue in a couple of strategic places and then just lift up that edge and tuck it in. So that's the first one. Then somewhere I've buried the others. There they are, under the dimensionals. Why would they be anywhere but under the dimensionals? Now, one, we can definitely hide underneath the bird. Possibly even two. But I will definitely put one underneath the bird. And do I need the third? I don't think I need the third. So again, I'm going to trim that end off. And to attach this, I'm going to use, I probably need a mini dimensional. Ooh, I can actually get a full dimensional. So I'm going to pop that down, pop my dimensional on. Just fits. I mean, I do mean just fits. And then we can peel the backing off that because we've learned that we need to take the backing off. Otherwise, it doesn't stick. And then that can go kind of there-ish. So I'm going to pick that up and then add some glue because I don't want it to just be the dimensional that keeps it in place. I want there to be a little bit more help. So then we can just pop that down, stick that down. And that is that. But I'm going to be a really good girl and I'm going to also stamp on the inside of my card. I know such a thing never happened. So I'm going to grab my little robin again. Well, I say robin, bird, my blue bird, my bird that happens to be blue, I should say. And I'm just going to have him down there as well. But I'm not. I can just add that to the inside of my card. And our first card is done. I'm just going to add this to the base card it doesn't matter which you do I'm doing it so that there is a margin around the outside so I'm not worried that it's not going to have glue in the right place and there we are so there's our first card so just a little bit of greenery and that nice pop of pink so that's that one now next one next We'll do the next one that's in the thing. So, isn't this just amazing that I've actually organised? It's slightly worrying. So, we've got our bird that we're using. I've got white die cuts this time. And a bit of scrap, a white card base, a magenta madness mat, a piece of designer series paper and my die cut piece. Now this is the same size at the moment, the same size as the layer, but I am going to trim it down so that it's got a little margin. And I'm also going to trim this down. So get me trimmer. And I wanted to do those kind of at the same time. In fact, I don't want the trimmer yet. Plug your brain in, you'll... You know, just, just plug your brain in. So I don't want that for the moment. I don't want that for the moment. Just want these two. So I'm just going to decide whether I want the, the um, to trim at the narrow end or the wide end. I think I'm going to try to line up my paper and my so I need to come down a wee bit. Okay, so we're going to have 
seal here. I'm going to just grab a silicon mat because I am going to come off the edge because I want this end to not have quite so much adhesive on. So if you bring in your silicon mat, um, it won't it won't stick to the mat. It'll just fold back. So that should be sufficient seal to then get this. And this is only for this bit. I need to I'll then adhere it all properly, but I need something to um, stick this to this. So I just need to. A little bit further down. That's square there, that's square there. Just make sure that we're about, yep, we're still bigger than I need it to be, so that's good. Square there, square there. I mean, we will square everything up anyway. So I've now got that stuck on, and now I can trim it as if it's one piece, which is what I was aiming to do. So I can bring this in, and then this I'm going to cut so that um, it ends up at, except I want to cut it at this end, um, I want it to be five and a half inches, so it's going to have a very narrow border. I will have American sizing um, on my website, I'm just checking that that's going to give me a big enough border. I might actually go one size up, so we'll go five and three eighths. By, mm, yeah, we'll trim there off and that off. By three, so no, by three and five eighths. Yes, three and five eighths. Sure, that's right. Yes. Right. Moment of truth. Did I get my trimming right? Let's get rid of those pieces for the moment. Or get rid of those pieces, even. Yes! Love it when a plan comes together. Right, OK, so seal is over there. And this is where I say attaching the paper to the card was purely just for the exercise of trimming it down. So it didn't need to be attached um, so it could withstand a hurricane. It just needed to be attached so that I could trim it down to size. And the paper is from the Flowers for Every Season in the annual. Um, so, yeah. Right, now I need my little, little blossom. So... I do need to do some stamping, but we'll do that in a moment. So I'm going to punch two flowers from my Magenta Madness. And I'm then going to grab the sentiment that I want. Gosh, you're all being so quiet. You're going to use some of the... In for home decor, wonderful. Um... Right, so I want, wishing you the happiest of birthdays, yes. I'm hoping that will fit on my H block, which it will, and then that tucks in there. Isn't it clever? Don't you love it? It's just so well thought out. I'm going to bring it out a little bit from there, but basically it's going there. And I'm sticking with black. When you're using a bright colour, you kind of don't want to get too much of bright, uh, other brightness. Um, it can be too much of a good thing. And that beautifully lines up with the, the swirl. always good. Now these I'm going to shape a little. Now I find that the cover of your um, sticky end of your take your pick is 
don't use that end just saying don't use this the pointy end great thing to shape flowers so I just pop them in the palm of my hand and push um, you could use you know the rubber end of a pencil something like that but I do find that that works really well and it's to hand so I'm going to pop a glue dot on the back of one and then layer it so that it's offset into the onto the other. And this is where I'm going to be all fingers and thumbs. But we'll do it. We'll manage. There we are. So we then end up with a really full flower. Like that. And then I'm just going to pop these little bits down here and they actually go up and down oops definitely all fingers and thumbs today so pop that there pop that there and then we need our little chappy just there yeah so again i'm going to trim these down which is always so much easier when you can find your snips. I think I'm actually going to trim it down by one whole leaf. And then add a little bit of glue. And again, I don't want all of it to be stuck down. Like that. And then this one will have coming up and again I'm going to trim the bottom off I might take the bottom single leaf off and then pop that there then pop that back on another glue dot for our flower, which we are going to add to the flower. I'm not going to leave it quite that empty. And I'm going to use a small dimensional for this one because it's actually got a smaller surface area. So it's small dimensional. Tuck him behind like that. And then I have got some of the playing with patterns resin dots again from the annual catalogue so let's use got these are obviously scraps from something so i'm going to pop one of those in the middle of our flower so that is our second card done so let me bring that oh it's not because i haven't put it on the card base ha! don't you love it um it would be our second card done when i've put it on the card base I thought it was a bit light when I picked it up. And then I've just got one more card to share with you. And then it will be time for prizes. And we love a prize. So that's that. Just going to turn it over and press because I like to press from the back. So now we've got a finished card. So really, you know, just little pops of colour rather than putting too much brightness on. So that's that one. And then we've got our final card, which is going to be quite bright as well. And I've got our little chappy. Now this, I have again, I've die cut a whole quarter sheet to get my piece. My magenta madness is cut short and fat, um, as was the whisper white version that I just finished. I like top folding cards for photography purposes. Um, so, yeah. So 
just burnish that. So this is a half sheet just scored in the middle. So I'm going to have this there. And I'm going to need to trim it because it's slightly off. Um, but I might trim it a bit more anyway because this I want here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of line it up ready to go ish and bring in the final sentiment if I can clean my block my previous sentiment so take the previous sentiment off bring in the thinking of you makes my day because that's rather a sweet sentiment to have that one now I like to let my stamps relax particularly if they're long and thin like that so you can then pick them up if you don't let them relax in fact let me show you so you may know this but if you just plonk your you know you pull you pull your thing up you plonk it down anything can happen so this is supposed to line up with this but not not really whereas if I let it relax I mean you can literally straighten it out if you want let me show you so if I if I attach one end I can straighten the whole sentiment out that's basically straight let me grab my piece of scrap and show you what I mean which is why you should always let your long thin stamps photopolymer in particular relax so this is supposed to be on a curve and it really isn't I mean it's on a bit of a curve but it's not much of a curve so I've managed to straighten it out which is good if you want it straight you can but not really what we were after. So clean that off so I don't get black all over my hands. So if I peel that off and just drop it down onto a piece of paper, leave it for a bit, uh, you know, pop that away, don't actually need that paper, pop that away, then I can pick it up and it's now back to where it should be with its curve. So where were we? We were doing that. And that, and we wanted it all to be straight. And then that is going in there. But we do need these kind of in place. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a tiny bit of seal, and I mean a tiny bit of seal. And in fact, I want it to line up that way. So I've got the smallest amount of seal, but it's keeping this in place so I can stamp up to it. But it will come off without any problem at all because it is the smallest piece and it will just twist off. So, thinking of you makes my day. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, I know the feeling, Candy. As opposed to, for me, it's just running and running and trying not to eat too many naughty things. I'm having Christmas off from a not eating too many naughty things point of view. Um, and depending on the weather, I may or may not run. I uh, don't think we need that anymore, so that's fine. Right. The other thing I want to do is... Um, I'm going to be really careful with this, actually. So that goes there. So I'm going to stick this down permanently now um, and line things up. And then I'm going to come back in and do scary things, which they're going to be scary for me 
possibly less so for you, but could be quite scary for you as well. Now this is the end I'm trimming off. Um, now for the top, because I want to have some of the white coming over the top, I'm going to add my seal to the top of my card base so that I know it's there. And then because I've got a straight edge here, um, I'm going to line up that end. I've got stick on my fingers now. I've got it on there. I'll rub it off. So I want to come up a wee bit. So line up straight there and straight there. Like that. That's the bit I want to get off. That was because I had it on my finger. Um, if you can get yourselves, we don't stock these anymore, unfortunately, but you can just use these adhesive erasers, which are brilliant. So, in fact, I'm not that far out with my sides, but I am just going to trim a wee bit off that side. And it is the smallest little piece. And then up here. Now, with this, you just need to be careful that you don't cut your card, just your layer because we don't want to cut the card. So those two bits can go in the bin. So that's that. Right, so this piece is going to go here. And again, we're just going to line it up. I'm going to put glue across the top and the bottom. So across the bottom here and then making sure I've got the right, the right side which is the wrong side if you see what I mean um, add some round my curve as well and apparently to my grid paper right Okay, so again, we want this to be lined up against the edge. So line it up so that it's square on a grid line. And then place, push, trim. Now you could do this on your trimmer. I actually find that I'm more likely to make a mistake if I use the trimmer uh, rather than just using my snips. Uh, but if you would rather use your trimmer, please use your trimmer. And then you can have flying bits of card as well. Right. So that is our basic card. Now, the thing I'm thinking of doing, and I'm not convinced it's a good idea, is actually stamping here with the vine. But I need to cut some ink on, which is the, the magenta madness. So I'm just going to trim a post-it note to size. What do we do as crafters before we got post-it notes? Just asking. Asking for a friend. Right, so what I want is kind of that so that we've got some greenery but not. In fact, I may, can't decide whether to have the, hmm, or hmm, I think we'll go, hmm, I know what I'm talking about. So we're going that way. So I don't need to ink all of this up because not all of it is going to be stamped. So what I want is that. Okay, pop that to one side, remove our post-it note, and as if by magic, we haven't got stamping. 
and then just come in with my blends again and because I've already got this I've, the magenta madness is going to mean that I don't end up with lead through to the card front or the inside of the card and I am going to colour the whole of the greenery this time trying to remember to leave the gaps there now you could if you wanted um, stamp before you die cut but because I wanted to show you as much of the manufacture as it were as possible without um, having to then do lots of die cutting this morning with you or nearly this afternoon oh I've gone over the edge I've gone over a bit it's all right it's going to be covered up no one's going to know that's going to be covered by something that I've just colored into the gap having said don't color into the gap I colored into the gap but it's fine it's not a problem it never is a problem it's why we have embellishments and then just some very quick shading And I really mean very quick. The, uh, the dark and light granny apple green are not hugely different in colour. So you can do a, a much looser amount of shading. Without worrying too much about it not blending properly. Thank you everyone for sharing. Uh, I'm just going to colour that bit in a little bit more. Right. Okay. So I've got another scrap of paper here and the same little flower punch, the small blossom punch. So just with some Whisper White, I'm going to punch out a couple of flowers again and shape. And we're going to do exactly the same with these as we did with the others. So we're going to layer them up with glue dots and a piece of uh, one of the resin dots so this time i'll try and do it from the front that's about even and then just fluff it up a bit again another dot and this is where i say it's going to be covered mess and then we've got our little birdie, which again I'm going to use a mini dimensional on. So mini birdie pops in under there. And then a resin dot. Let's use a little baby one. Resin dot there. And we are done! So there you go, some quite curvy, uh, that's obviously the liner for going in there, which I will finish off uh, later. Um, so our three cards for this morning were in order. Uh, this one with the little bird on the inside and only some colouring on the vine. Then we've got the one with the designer series paper and the magenta madness um, flower with white die cuts. This had granny apple green die cuts. And then we've just done this one, which is the thinking of you makes my day following the curve and with some stamping and die cuts and punches and things. So those are our cards. Right. So. So, 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 what am I looking for? I'm looking for this pile. So, uh, today's prize, which will be drawn in two weeks, is from last year's celebration, the very popular The Gangs All Mere stamp set, which is so cute. And I have to say, I wish it was still around, but it's not. So that will be for today, and I'll draw that in two weeks' time. Uh, you need to share and put the word shared, ideally as a single word, um, before, by the end of the Sunday before the draw, so that I've got some hope of doing it without rushing in the morning. 
You're welcome, Candy. I'm, I wanted a bit of colour. Um, it's so dismal outside today. It's kind of grey and miserable. Uh, right, so the prize for two weeks ago was a mini paper cutter. And the winner, who was on, and I hope still is, is Lorna. So Lorna, I will get this posted out to you after the Christmas rush. Uh, I've got your address, so that's easy. I will pop this in the post for you after the Christmas rush. So thank you for that. And do remember, as I say, that the prize for this week is this. And the prize from last week, which there is still time, is the Time for Tea bundle. So we've got the Spot of Tea framelits and the stamp set. Now, if you're overseas, the prize will be one of my tutorial bundles. Um, so do just, if you're overseas, please don't think that you won't get something you will, but it will be one of my tutorial bundles. The only ones I don't do. You'll hear Lorna, marvellous. Um, so yes, it's any of the tutorial bundles other than the mega bundles, which are huge. Um, so yes, these are for, if you're in the UK, if you're overseas, you get the tutorial bundle of your choice. Thank you very much indeed. Have a fantastic Christmas for those of you who celebrate Christmas. For those of you who don't, have a good week. Um, I am still intending to be here next Tuesday. Um, that is my hope, but it really depends how things go over the next week as to whether I'm still going to need to be relaxing because uh, my father is going to be with us for a week and it's lovely having him with us but it does tend to put me behind a little bit um, so I am intending to be here next week um, same time, same channel as they say um, so I hope we'll, I will see you then and then we're into the new catalogue and celebra celebration so yeah, have a safe Christmas for those of you in the UK stay local um, obviously, if you're in tier four, stay so local that you are in your own house. Um, if you're anywhere else, please stay local and let's see if we can kick this nasty thing into touch. Um, and I will see you next week, God willing. Have a fantastic day and I will see you again very soon. Bye bye.